We've got a. The sound quality is degraded and very poor. Is the okay, comment? What else is new? That's usual, right? Well, we haven't even tried yet. So, okay. but but that I mean, right. everybody should try very hard to project, not just speak into the microphone, but the, when we're relying exclusively on the owl, it's. Speak up. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, let's get it going. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Town of Camden Slick Board meeting for January 17th, 2023, the, the new year. Um, the, the Slick Board, uh, uh, um, excuse me, the, um, the, the agenda is, uh, can be found on the Town of Camden website uh, uh, under the Select Board, Select Board Packets agenda. Uh, on that agenda is a link to Zoom. If you'd like to join via Zoom, please do so. Um, also, we are streaming through Zoom tonight uh, on YouTube, and uh, just FYI to all out there, and we'll try to um, keep our voices up if we can and, and volume because the, the uh, sound, uh, sound quality in this situation is not the best. So just want you to understand that up front. In terms of uh, Zoom, we um, ask any, any attendees who would like to uh, make a comment during the meeting or uh, provide some information to raise your hand, please. That's the much preferred method, Q&A. Uh, we can't always get to the questions and answers, and we do not monitor chat. So please uh, understand that. Um, and again, uh, we'll try uh, uh, to stay close to the mics, and also the sound pickup is from the owl here because of the mode we're in. So we'll have to um, do it until we get our uh, discussion, hopefully in February, about upgrading the system and making it a little bit better, more operative. Thank you. So with that, um, before I start the agenda, I would like to um, you know, just inform the board. I want to move one item on the board with your approval, and that's basically to move the approval of the Duck Derby on Sunday, May 21st, from the consent agenda to an action item. So unless I hear a, um, a disagreement, that's what we will do uh, so we can have a conversation about the Duck Derby. And, uh, give, and if there's no disagreement, we'll move forward with the rest of the agenda, starting with public comment on non-agenda items. Do we have anybody in the audience who would like a public comment on non-agenda item? Sir. And please, as, as usual, if you keep maintain your comments, remarks to three minutes, and I'd appreciate we'll it very much. brief. Oh, thank you. Yeah. My name is Roger Akeley. Uh, I live on Cross Street. And I just wanted to say that um, since the town has uh, repaired the uh, Sluiceway Gate and the, the um, dam, the water is flowing over the dam now, it's been very gratifying uh, to see it go over the dam the way it's supposed to. I know over the last few years, maybe even the last 20 years or more, there haven't been significant uh, repairs done to the dam. But the Save the Dam believes that it is necessary for a few more short-term minor repairs uh, to occur. Um, the McGunticook River study is in process, and it probably is going to go two years. Who knows? Could go longer. You know, it's a complicated project. But in the meantime, the aura uh, of, the, of the dam and the area of the dam we think can be enhanced by a small uh, expense, expense of funds uh, dedicated to strategic repairs of the dam. Thank you. A young lady, next to, next to the gentleman. I'll get to you in a minute, Tom. I'm not Why ignoring you. Call me a young lady. Oh, I'm sorry. So nice of you. <laughs> you can call me an old man. I'm okay. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Bernice Berger, Thank you. Cross Street. Because there does not seem to be a budget line item specifically for the Montgomery Dam, we, the Save the Dam group, are presenting the town of Camden with a pledge in the amount of $11,500, which will make monies available for repairs and maintenance for this coming season. Your attention to our local treasure in the heart of Camden is most appreciated. We ask the Camden Select Board to assist by recommending to make the short-term repairs a reality. 
Thank you, Bernice. Thank you for a very generous offer. And we appreciate the, the olive branch. Good. Anyone else? Uh, um, I'm sorry. I, on the same topic, so. Hi, Jennifer Healy, Camden resident. The pledge that Bernice just mentioned of funds from the Save the Dam Falls Committee is a robust and sincere statement and offer to make necessary repairs to the Montgomery Dam. We as the Save the Dam Falls Committee are here with our voices to ask, along with our concerned community, to keep the water flowing over the dam for the upcoming year. The sound of the rushing waterfall at Camden Harbor is its own voice, and it should continue to be heard as well. Let's take care of what we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, Tom. Uh, uh, you can finish with that stuff. I didn't, I didn't see any other hands, Tom, so I'm going to go on to you. Excuse the limp. I'm getting a new hip next week. Sorry? I said, excuse my limp. I'm getting a new hip next week. Oh, well, best of luck. Yeah. Tom Resick, uh, 67 Rawson. Oh, I wanted to pass. Can you pass those down? Uh, good evening. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to offer uh, some clarity to Audra's comments at the last select board meeting on December 12th regarding the Coastal Children's uh, Museum decision to not further pursue a new site for their museum at the Tannery Park location. Uh, the Friends of Tannery Park were concerned that Audra's explanation of the museum's decision might have left the impression that the Friends of Tannery Park or some other neighborhood group was opposed to the possibility of a new children's museum being a part of a new Tannery Park. Uh, quite the opposite was true. Uh, the Friends of Tannery Park felt that a properly scaled children's museum would be a perfect combination within a community park with a shared preschool natural playground combined with uh, the Camden Farmers Market and situated between uh, Tannery Park site between Mount Batty and the McGuntucook River and the River Walk. We engaged in numerous phone conversations and two face-to-face -face meetings with the board members of the Children's Coastal Museum. We were very excited about the possibility of this multi-use educational, recreational community park concept. Gail Bedigan, uh, who was the, uh, the president of the museum, uh, I expressed my concern about the interpretation of, her com of, of what Audra said about her comments. And she forwarded a letter to me addressed to you guys and to the friends, which I'm going to read. Uh, Dear Camden Select Board and Friends of Tannery Park, the Coastal Children's Museum had, a very, had very positive meetings and emails with both the town officials of Camden and also with the Friends of Tannery Park about our interest in possibly locating a new museum building at the Tannery Park site. Each of the above organizations couldn't have been more welcoming. Our decision to not go forward, forward with this project on that particular site was totally based on the environmental constraints of that area and of the impact that our museum would have possibly on traffic and parking. Just to clarify, both the town officers and the Friends of Tannery Park were very positive about having us put a building on that site. Thank you for the kindness and time both groups offered us. Best regards, Gail Bedigan, current president of the board, Coastal Children's Museum. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that because... Thank you, Thank you Tom. Thank uh, you very much. And, I, I mean, we have a very good relationship with them, and she's asked me to be on their board. So, clearly, good. we're on the same... Path. Well, maybe it can still work. Yeah, maybe it will. And uh, take care of that hip. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Any other comments from the public uh, before we move on the agenda? Uh, thank you very much, all the comments. Mike. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'd like to move on to the approval of the board minutes from December 13, 2022. Any comments, corrections? 
we would love to see the minutes. They weren't in there. Okay. And I, I was of, having a moment of like, oh no, I didn't yeah, I read so. them, I, I, but I, I I'm glad right. that. I just assumed it was there. But um, uh, yeah, well, let's uh, motion to, to table to a, uh, a date certain of uh, February 7th. So moved. Second. Second. Let's, let's, give a couple, let's, let, let's let the room clear. Let's um, go. Two minutes. You don't have to leave, you know, you can stay and watch me make a We really feel bad when you all leave. Oh, it's like you don't <laughs> care about me. It's, it's sad. <laughs> Thank you. At least stay and sing a song with us. Or see. Bring dinner or something. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yep. Appraisal Bit Award yeah, is the really. Appraisal Bit Award is, is, is a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Great. Um, I think we're substantially cleared out now. Um, again, I had seconded uh, the motion to table. Ma motion made and seconded to table to a date certain February 7th. All those in favor? 5 0. Thank you very much. Um, to our consent agenda, again, just, just correcting what I said earlier, there will only be two items on the consent agenda, and they are the approval of the close. be extra since. To belabor that whole thing with the audio since we're relying exclusively on this right. like any let me say it again all right again reminding everybody uh, we are uh, uh, streaming YouTube uh, via zoom it, and because we're reliant on the owl which is a single device in just in front of us uh, that's a good idea um, I'll try to speak to it more loudly um, and it, because this mode does is not the best for audio uh, for all of you who are trying to listen tonight. So I'm going to spend a little less attention to the microphone here and a lot more attention to the owl. I hope that helps and we'll all do the same. Where we are now, right now at the moment is on item three in our agenda, which is now two uh, uh, consent agenda items, the first of which is the approval of the closure of Atlantic Avenue for Winterfest at the Camden Public Library for Saturday, January 28th, 2023. The second item is the approval of a Vittler license for Peter Otts at 16 Bayview Landing. Uh, are there any objections to the item, those two items on the uh, consent agenda? Not hearing them, any of those two items are hereby adopted. Item four, we have uh, on, uh, three items on the public hearings. Is just a curiosity, is there anybody here that want, will be speaking to any of these licenses from the public? Um, okay, not here. The reason I ask that is because the purpose of a public hearing is for the public to provide input to the select board uh, prior to its deliberation on a matter. Um, I, would, I would normally have, go through a procedure there and ask individuals from the public or on Zoom to raise their hand uh, to make a comment pro or against or just to speak to the item. And I would close the public uh, discussion and revert to select board uh, deliberation. Um, because we don't have any public that I'm hearing or seeing, we will close the public hearing portion. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, yes, no dogs is here. Okay, okay, yeah. good. good. Uh, thanks for telling me. I'll, yeah. go, I'll go through the speech again. Uh, just to be, get, uh, the, the purpose of the public hearing is to get public input of any kind uh, for the benefit of the select board. Um, and um, I, I, will, I will go through each one and I will ask if there's any public uh, input. Uh, please be courteous, please be brief. Uh, identify yourself. Um, all questions will through me, as as chair, and uh, did, we did from the from the select board. And I uh, said then we will deliberate and and uh, act on the matter at hand. The first one is the application of Peter Arts at 16 Bayview Landing for a renewal of a Class One restaurant liquor license. Is there any public here? And I don't believe there is, so I'll close the public hearing and revert to select board deliberation. Do I have questions or a motion? I make a motion that we apply the that we approve the liquor license for Peter Otts. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion. All those in favor? Five zero. Thank you. The second is the application of Bayview Street Inn at 16 Bayview for renewal of a hotel Class 1A liquor license. Anybody from the public or, or on Zoom, I don't see any hands or any public, so I'll close the public portion and revert to select board decision, uh, discussion, or motion. 
I make a motion that we approve the liquor license for the Bayview Street Inn at, at 16 Bayview. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? All in favor? 5-0. Thank you. To the last application, it is for uh, uh, jo um, Jason Dopolt, DBA Camden Snow Dogs, for a special amusement permit at the Camden Snowball. We have some public comment on this one. <laughs> this is a special amusement permit. That's uh, usually a special event. Ah. Howdy, I'm Jason, uh, Camden Snow Dogs, also Harbor Dogs, uh, and Camden resident. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, trying to get some music at uh, the Snow Bowl on Friday nights and whatever days we have to reschedule the music to <laughs> due to weather concerns and stuff like that. So, Can you give us a schedule and plans for these Friday evening events? Is it a yeah. certain number of hours? Yeah, we're going to be going from about five, we're, uh, five to six, or excuse me, four to six or five to seven, depending oh. on the band and on the crowd but uh, no later than 7, 7.30. Um, just, you know, anywhere from two to four piece bands, some acoustic, some rock, some uh, bluegrass, you know, a little bit of everything. The location of this uh, uh, will be outdoors? Inside the lounge. Uh, lodge. Inside the lodge, uh, okay. totally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay. Allison, go ahead. But is this an, I guess, I, you know, I guess I understand. You must need approval for it because you're here. Um, mm -hmm. it, isn't it already happening? Well, we did the first one. The, the second one we haven't. We didn't, never did. Um, yeah, because I didn't realize that I had to get approval because I didn't realize the liquor license uh, triggered the uh, approval needed for music and special events. Special events. There it is. So interesting. It seems like that's the kind of thing that would fall under the discretion of the snowball. Manager, I mean, if somebody I over there in charge of things wants to decide that it's okay to have music, it just seems awfully obstructionist uh, I, I to, the, to I, go through this. I'm certainly in favor of it. My, yeah. I'll say my son felt it was very loud and he was complaining a little bit, but he's, <laughs> he complains about everything, so um, I think it's probably fine. Yeah, I'm, it's, sure you'll, I'm sure you'll take feedback if everybody there thinks it's too loud. Then. So thanks for doing that. That's oh, not a problem. It's just uh, whatever we can do to draw people to the Snow Bowl during the winter and just maybe probably show that it can be done in a respectful, you know, manner and that we can possibly do more events in the summertime and stuff like that. So I hear like, that all the time that we should have more events there. And I would love to see some music in the summertime of people yeah. sitting up on the hill and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. I think that would be great. Go for it. Yep. Um, but it's just... Lining everything up and, you know, making sure it doesn't overlap with any other events that are, <laughs> that like all the weddings and stuff like that. And You're right, nice. right, That's right. Nice. We'll keep the ideas coming. Yeah. So hopefully maybe one day we get mo like mountain biking and stuff up there <laughs> a little bit more. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fingers Thanks crossed. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Uh, uh, no, any other public comment? Um, and not seeing or hearing any, um, I'll revert to close the public hearing and revert to select board comments. No. Um, Motion to approve. I make a motion that we approve the special amusement permit for Camden Snow Dogs. Second. Motion made to second the discussion. Those in favor? Five zero. Have a, have it have, have at it. Thank you, Jason. And let us know when you have uh, music plans, whatever. We're happy to put it on the Camden website. Oh, okay. You know, we can we can help. You know, share the word. So. Should I just tag the town? Or? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's tag the town. <laughs> I love this. Let's tag the town. Yeah. Tag Sophie. How about tag you tag me. Sophie? Yeah. And she, <laughs> she, she, volu she volunteered. I volunteered. Remember that. Okay. Exactly. Uh, happy to help. Cool, because I normally just uh, share it to the Snow 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 page, the Snow Dogs page, and Harbor Dogs page. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great. Yacht Club, maybe too. Yeah. Yacht Club. Why not? I love that. Why not? <laughs> Absolutely. Onward to our action items. Uh, now I will move to the first action item, the, uh, what I modified earlier in the agenda, and that is basically the approval of a, for the Duck Derby by the West Bay Rotary on was it Sunday, May 21st at 2 p.m. <coughs> Discussion. Allison. Um, did it, they? You're a member of the West Bay Rotary, right? Um, so do you have any? information about no. is it not because so for the past um three years 
Oh, Sandy. Oh, we should listen to Sandy. I was going to say, who's in charge of it? Um, that's good to know. Please, please. Because Peter said he wasn't going to do it anymore. We love participation. Yeah. Thank goodness. Introduce okay. yourself, please. Hi, I'm Sandy Cox. I'm uh, a member of the West Bay Rotary Club. And um, I'm here to ask permission to hold the Duck Derby uh, race again this year. It will be the week before Memorial Day due to the tides. have to be just after high tide. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's the week before I Memorial see. Day. Um, again, we set up noodles for a racetrack. We go down the left side of the, of the uh, falls and come out right to the dock. We have uh, kayaks scattered around to pick up all the loose um, ducks. And then we come back the next day to pick up um, the ducks that are caught in the rocks um, during, the, during the race. Um, so I know Allison helped us last year and she did a great job cleaning up. Um, we drained it completely and you were in there pulling out a bunch of stuff and we'll do the same thing. And uh, we'll be there the day after picking them up I think we were very successful. Um, I think there were six that were turned in after the Sunday um, that we uh, we turned into the um, the chamber office, and they were given gift certificates to the uh, ice cream place. Is that all? There were only yeah. that was probably predominantly my kids. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I thought you were. I mean, I. <laughs> have enjoyed this with Peter the last few years, or I think, you know, the last two years, we tried to make a really big effort to get them all. I think the first year we did it, there was more enthusiasm. I know I did a better job ahead of time getting the word out about cleaning them up afterwards, and maybe Peter did too, and then the next year we were tired or something. I really liked what you guys did with the reward system. Um, I still, what we talked about last year was that there was going to be like an accounting of it. So keeping track of the number that are lost. I get a lot of comments about this and I, you know, restaurants are not giving people p plastic straws, all these things. Mm -hmm. And then we intentionally throw these ducks in that crack and there are at least a couple hundred every year that get away and I guess to me that's not really an acceptable loss rate. I think last year was was really good. I think we we really between the ki extra kayaks and the, um, the the next day picking up on the rocks that really helped because they do get caught in the rocks and if you don't get them out that same day when the tides come in they're going to be flushed out and uh, um, I was unaware of it, but if you want an accounting of af before and after, we can do that. Yep. I mean, there's a lot that's still, that are being missed. I mean, I could just pull my f friends that saw them. I mean, it's if you find, if you see that, you should let us know, because we're in good faith, we felt we had cleaned up um, the ducks that were at least visible and available to us on the island and mm -hmm. going down the right side. Mm -hmm. That's where the bulk of them are. Um, I don't think there were any left in the in back of the falls. But right, I um, do think we get those mm -hmm. fairly well. I think it's the ones that crack and split open and mm -hmm. then sink. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. they end up wedged in different places and you, you don't see them, but then you're out and you know for days and days and days and months afterwards, you end up seeing them from a different angle or this is the first I've heard this so I mean, I, to me it's a good lesson and not it's not just the duck people lose their mind about the ducks a little bit because they're like, why is Camden doing this but what I always find is every time I go to look for the ducks the whole lesson was sort of supposed to be that the majority of the trash we find when we're looking for the ducks <laughs> is other trash yeah. that otherwise would have been missed that we're not noticing because we're not looking carefully so the uh, the idea at the beginning was kind of that it would be a net We'd be removing more plastic than than is added, but I think mm. maybe if we could just this year do a little bit better job ahead of you know just a few more people maybe, um, and we could coordinate 
Um, and yeah, you <clears throat> will do whatever it takes to uh, to satisfy. I know the the kayaks really help clean it up, but once the ones that get stuck in the in the falls and the rocks, we have to come back that next day, and the water's lowered. We're able to get out on the island and clean it up. I think removing the noodles so fast is part of the problem too, because the tide changes and then they. I, I know I've run down like so we, many times mm. to the to the fisherman's dock to grab to, with my Elvernet to grab them as they're floating away, like later on in the day. I don't know. It just um, it, it, usually we're cleaning out all the ducks out of the racetrack and around. Those are clean. It's the ones that get disturbed with the high tide if if they're right. if they're uh, caught in the rocks. Right. And we don't we can't get to them until the next day when we're mm -hmm. it's low tide again. It's still like 200 ducks that are being. That, I mean, Peter told me what the numbers were before, and it I, seemed really high. They did in their counting, you said. And he, I mean, we'll he thought that was a really good. He, you know, he said it was about 10 percent, which he I think felt. We ever did in the counting, but we'd gladly do that if you like. Think that's absolutely. I think it's essential. Just so I mean, we, we have 3,000 ducks that we right. that we launch, and we can. They're all numbered. We can. Right. We can count them. We count them before, and then we can count them afterwards. I think that's a good idea. I think it's great. I completely support uh, Allison's request to have a, a better accounting system. I have three ducks in my office that I have fished at Late Beach um, that were all split up. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's the issue is that they, they no longer float. Um, so the other thing is I would encourage the West Bay Rotary to look into other types of ducks, maybe than than the plastic ones, the hard plastic ones. Maybe more of the rubber ones rather right. than the plastic ones. Yeah, maybe maybe they're easier to fish. They're they don't split open. Let me um, do some homework, and I yeah, can let Allison know what we find. <laughs> and uh, or, or salt ducks that dissolve in water. Make the ocean so saltier. You don't. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I've never run into that, but yeah. we'll certainly look into it. So sure. I think it would be super. It, it would be super interesting to have. The, the 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 duck derby, but have an innovative type of duck that's zero impact on the ocean and the river. Let's yeah, see what we challenge. But I, yeah, it's a good challenge. Yeah, we'll see what we can find. Somebody's make paper mache ducks and paper mache ducks. That won't work. How much money? The thing that got when I was talking to Peter about this before, he was like, you know, this is our best, our 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 biggest fundraiser. We raise all this money. And the twelve thousand dollars. Wow. And that great. all goes back into the community That's to great. the nonprofits. Well, I think you've got Thank some you. we've got some actions. Are there any other comments, Tom or Stephanie? Anybody, any of the others that you have? I think to, yeah, we talked about the accounting, talked about evaluating for the future yeah. alternate materials. That's probably a great idea. Um, and anything else? That's it. Well, I'm, I'm happy to come I mean, clean. I didn't, I didn't come clean, clean up last week, last year, because I think I had COVID or I was sick. I feel but, like a lot of people ended up not being able to do it, and I was like, this isn't as much fun as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Do you want me to come do a uh, report to Allison on the findings or come back to the um, board? I, I think that the uh, probably report to the town manager should manager? share it with us, and that's okay. fine. It, it comes the same anyway, but yep. um, but especially well, the, to we... the accounting, I don't care if you, co if you copy the select board, you can do that also. That's not a problem. But the accounting, is just, that'll happen this year. Uh, uh, and I think, but to the uh, investigation, uh, just, just, just let us know. I mean, okay. It was supposed to be a positive. What we, Peter and I talked about before, and it's probably me also dropping the ball, was that after the event, not we were going to do like a presentation of like this is all the trash that we found that you know non duck. This is all the good that came out of it. This is all the money that West Bay Rotary raised. This is how many ducks got away. This is how many we got. And we just can, kind of a good. We can give you an overall accounting. That's that's easy to do. Um, take pictures uh, if you're going to be involved. We can take pictures of what we pulled out of the the falls area. It's right. most can, of I mean, we can clean up the It's amazing at what's, the same time. what's there every year. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it really is. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sandy, for yeah, thank listening you, Sandy. to, to good, us. Good we to appreciate see. it. Thank you. Good to see you again, Sandy. <laughs> uh, we love the duckies. I have a motion to approve. I'll make a motion up. to approve the Duck Derby on Sunday, May 21st. I second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Not seeing any, hearing any. All those in favor? 5 0. Thanks again, thank Sandy. You. Thank you. The second uh, well, item, which was the first, uh, is the um, bid award for the um, RFP for Real Property Equalization Project. And we'll invite Mr. Kerry to come to the podium to tell us the long story of this one. 
<laughs> I was like, didn't we just do this? We have popcorn. Well, that's I, what, that's what I, I see that I've that's yet right. to that's, undergo a full forensic reevaluation. Well, I think Carrie will start off with explaining what we've done and why we're, why we're here. It's not good. I will start off by explaining what we've done so far. But louder, because right now I can tell you if you okay. gotcha. really I'll get this out of my way. Then. Actually, Carrie, if you want to, you can move the podium close to the owl. Okay. <laughs> Just yeah. remember also that we are recording and it'll be uploaded onto YouTube. So thanks. Oh, yes. thank you. So there is some backup for. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Please, Mr. Carrie. Okay. Carrie. So uh, let me start off with the state constitution. Um, section se Article 9, Section, section 7. <laughs> I'm not putting any ducks in the water. No, no, this that's good. Um. Um, while the public expenses shall be assessed on estates, a general evaluation shall be taken at least once every 10 years. The last time we did one was 2004. Updates that we've done between then and now are updates. They're not full revaluations. Re right. And a full revaluation is interior and exterior inspection. They measure and list um, every building on the property and request admittance to the interior so we can uh, grade and make sure we've got that data right. That's the full measure and list, and it takes two years. The updates that we've done is taken, uh, depending on uh, which year it was, um, anywhere from three months to, to six months. So this is a lesser process. I mean, it's a greater process. And, and just so that the public's edification, because as I said, the word reevaluation in most people's mind means one thing. My house is being reevaluated, and that's it. But the interim uh, between 04 and now, the two or that we've done. The three. We're, three. Well, for for uh, what reason were those three done? So in, in, in every case, you know, we, we study sales all the time, current sales. And, and we come up with a ratio, which is the assessed value divided by the sales price. And what that does, it allows us, it helps us understand how our assessed values are in relation to the market. Mm -hmm. Because the other thing that the Constitution says is that we have to assess at market value. It calls it just value. The Supreme Court has says just value equals market value. So we keep very close tabs on what the market is doing. And so to complicate, my response to you is that we certify our ratio, our overall ratio, all the, all the uh, ratios combined. We, we certify with the state at, we hope, 100%. Because at 100%, the $25,000 uh, homestead exemption is worth $25,000. The, the $6,000 veterans is worth $6,000. If we were certifying at 90%, those exemptions would only be 90%. Mm -hmm. of what they are. Mm -hmm. But even more importantly than that is that um, uh, personal property. So we now have about $12 million in personal property. If we were at 90%, we would only get, be able to claim 90% of that. And so now we're talking about some real value that we're not, we're not able to collect, and therefore that puts pressure on the mill rate. So. Another word for a revaluation is an equalization project. Mm -hmm. And what that means is, you know, when we did it in 2017, I remember a graphic that I put up on the board that impressed a lot of people was that on the waterfront, we were at 62%. The, say, that, say around Pearl Street, we were at 85%. So what that means is that the people on Pearl Street um, were paying we're paying more in taxes than the people on the, on the waterfront who mm -hmm. are being taxed only on 62% of, of the property. So what we do in a revaluation is we bring everybody to the same level. So if, if, if one sector is at 80% and another at 60, and our target say is 95%, the 80% is gonna rise 15%, and the 60% is gonna go up 35%. Mm -hmm. And that's why some people, when we do a revaluation, they'll say that my neighbor only went up $1,000, I went up 1500 Why is that? That's why that is. And so to me, and I think to, I think to any assessor, 
the equalization portion is much more important than anything else to, because that's when we have, when we're sure that the tax burden is being spread uh, fairly and equitably in the same manner to everybody. And that's, that's the goal of this. Is, and just asking questions again for public comments I've received, yeah. why uh, in 2004 was the last time this full re-evaluation that was done in which we're what, uh, 18 years later or whatever the number mm -hmm. is, uh, why did, that, is there no enforcement of the 10 years in this? Very little enforcement. Okay. There's very little enforcement. And, 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 w and when there is enforcement, it, it's, it's usually, this is just one of many issues. Mm. And and I'm pleased to report we don't have any issues <laughs> that I know about anyway. Good, good, good. Uh, may, I just, that was important to clarify that because when people say reevaluation, they really, for the most part, may not yeah. understand that there are different levels of evaluations right. and why they occur, reevaluation and why they occur. The most recent one was because of the ratio mm -hmm. that you mentioned where the value of the market, which shot up because mm -hmm. of COVID and et cetera, um, uh, made our ratio dip down to like 70 percent. Well, I mean, let me expand on that. Exactly, Please. exactly. I mean, right now, so I was looking at sales yesterday, and we had one that cracked 80 percent. Could you maybe for the public, I'm imagining listening, when, like sure. when I was listening to this the very first time, mm -hmm. can you give some real examples like a house that sells for this amount of money that was mm -hmm. assessed for this amount of money? And sure. Sure, although I can't do the math in my head so quickly, so if I have the numbers not exactly right, this is why. So a house that, that's valued at $400,000 sells for $300,000, I'm sorry, sells for $500,000. That'll be a ratio of, say, 85%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A house that is valued at $400,000 and sells at $400,000, that ratio is 100%. Mm -hmm. That house is valued at 400,000, sells for 300,000, that ratio is probably 110%, okay? So, so what we're finding right now though is this COVID market is although it has slowed down, Sandy and I were talking about this before the meeting started, there are fewer sales now, but the prices, people are not necessarily, there's no bidding wars going on now uh, people might be getting a little less than their asking price, but the but the prices are not going down. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they've, mm -hmm. they've reached, maybe they will, but right now they've reached a level where they're staying. They're, where they're staying, and and things are selling. When 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 interest rates dropped last month, now at that time, we had 26 active listings in Camden. Mm -hmm. As soon as those interest rates dropped, half of them went under contract. Wow. And if, and if they wind up closing, then we'll have, you know, 13 houses, mm. uh, properties on the market. Mm. Obviously, it's changing. Things come on and go off every, mm. every day. But, but that's the situation. So one of the things that drove the prices up was a lack of inventory. Right. Yeah. And we haven't seen that improve at all. Right. Well, to your analogy about the $400,000 home, the analogy that I would mention is you mentioned 400 to 500, 400 to 300, but in a market like this, that 400, exaggerating a little bit from easy math, could be sell for $800,000. Oh. And in case your ratio is 50%. Right, right. So that's I'm exaggerating, just but that's what a, that's what a, a boom market like this can do well, to I, the ratios you're talking. I about. said that one cracked 80. We had two in the 40s wow. and a bunch in the 50s. Wow. So that's still going on today. Else, yeah, you have a question? I think Tom. Tom, Tom go ahead. Sure. Well, Carrie, why did we? Why did it take us 18 years to do a full reevaluation? It's a good question, I, and I I, it, I think it was irresponsible, but. Um, I'm not going to cast aspersions on the of course not. on a predecessor, but it should have happened. Uh, he should have made a case to the select board that it needed to happen. Um, Anything else, Tom? Nope. Okay, Allison. So, I would assume that the you know part of the reason that it doesn't happen is because it's often very unpopular and often results in not what happened in 2017 but what just happened recently, um, where in 2017, there, it was, when I was talking to people about it, it was a lot easier to make the case that there was like a benefit to many people who maybe deserve, not deserved a benefit, but needed the benefit. There were you know, so many 
it was that Pearl Street situation where they're paying more than their fair share. But it seems, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the most recent phenomenon has been the value of land, for the most part, is what's gone up so much. And it's less, it used to matter a lot more the, the type of house that you have. And so the person that couldn't afford to build a really nice house was paying less in taxes. And now that matters a lot less than the location. And so we saw the value of like the mid-range properties skyrocket in this last boom or whatever you want to call it. But the million, two million, eight million dollar houses didn't see that same increase in value. So for the most part, people that were already paying a lot in taxes or had really expensive homes are paying about the same, or actually in a lot of cases went down some. And mm -hmm. people with mid-range or lower range houses saw an increase. Mm -hmm. So that's where I, under I understand the resist. I, of course, that whole fairness and fair market value and blah, 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 that makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't Often, you know, sometimes it doesn't result the way you want it to. It seems like that's the trend for us. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that was the early part of the COVID market. I, I think that that evened out as time went on. Mm -hmm. the, 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 more, uh, uh, the more expensive properties, they, they have, you're right, like we're, uh, a property that went up 50%, uh, which was almost typical for a while in the, in the mid-level area. Um, the, 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 the more expensive properties didn't go up by that much, but they went up a lot. I mean, if you looked at it dollar-wise, they certainly went up more in dollars than the mid-levels. Sure, but it resulted in well, sometimes in lower it, taxes it does. because then yeah, they were paying that's before. Right. Yeah, because, because they went up less than the average. Right. 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 So, but I think it's important to note, though, in the recent correct me, uh, the recent reval we did was based on market sales only. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of comments from people that said, I didn't improve my house, I didn't do this, I, or, or my next door neighbor added rooms to their home. And that, does it, that, that factor is huge, can be huge. That will be evaluated in this yes. proposed value. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's a huge difference. Yeah. Because even when the, in the category of million dollar homes, um, many of them have been expanded dramatically. And that, that goes beyond what happened when somebody next door sold their home, which was the basis of the most recent valuation. And but don't we keep track of that? So does anything happen to the assessed value when somebody does a major renovation? Yes. So that's it's, already happening. It, it, it should happen, but it may not happen in, in, in concert with the amount, at least my experience, had not happened because of the in, in, inflation. Mm -hmm. in terms of building costs and that kind of thing, didn't keep up with market. If, you, if I did an improvement in my home three or four years ago, it would be totally different than today in value. And that, what that, I'm hoping is that for all these people like me, that the interior of their home is actually less than what might be expected. Like it's actually <laughs> declined over time and someone's yeah, gonna walk in and yeah. be like, oh, this kitchen is <laughs> unacceptable. <laughs> that it might help people like us? Yeah. Is there any? Yeah, like, yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, you know, people don't have to allow us into their, ho into their homes. Right. Okay. Right. Um, however. What happens if they don't? Then I don't find out what you just said. Yeah. That's good. Oh, you can look all around. But so, so that, I think, is something that would be helpful for people to understand. Like, what, the, what are you looking for? What are you not looking for? Can they get in trouble for anything? Do you go and talk to the code enforcement office that says their stairway was too narrow and now the kids have to move out? Or I, I don't know what the right, I'm not trying to say what the right answer is or isn't there, but you must see a lot of things or whoever does. I'm not aware of any code enforcement that happens during evaluations. Not really. I mean, I mean if I see something egreg so egregious that I recognize it, I, I certainly would. If it was a safety issue, I certainly would say something. Mm -hmm. Um, that must put you in a difficult position determining what is or isn't a, an actionable safety issue. No, ma no, just making Clint aware. He can go and take a look and say, nope, that's fine. 
If, if children are being housed in locations where there's not proper egress, there absolutely should be a report. I am not in any way saying what I think should or shouldn't happen. I'm wondering what does happen and how that's handled. It, go, it goes the other way, too. Clint will tell me about an improvement that maybe I don't know about, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I knock on the door and assess it. It, I mean, we, we don't, you know, we don't work in a vacuum. Yeah, I'm not in any way trying to say that something shouldn't happen. Well, I'm just curious. There's, there's, there's so many factors involved here, and, you're, and then you, I'm, you can't answer them. But, but the most important the public needs to know, they do, don't need to provide access to egress to their homes if they don't want to, but that can have a double-edged sort of effect. Oh, it, also, and I know Camden is absolutely perfect with permits, but I also suspect there are work that's been done without permit. I hate right, to tell you, but I think that? it's quite a few, quite a oh, bit. Because you go in the house, you'll see it. You'll see the new kitchen. Oh, yeah, no, so how do you handle that when you find that work has been done without a permit? Well, you're, you're in the gray area now. We, we talked about safety, so let's take that off the table. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, if I walk into a house, first, there's a really good chance I'm not even going to be aware that it was done without a permit. Mm -hmm. But um, for the most part, in a situation like that, I'll simply assess it. At its value, it's 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 yeah. it, it certainly it adds value. But but we're talking about whether or not I'm telling the CEO. Mm -hmm. I'm probably not aware that it was that it was done without a permit. Correct. Right. If if I if I am aware of it, if it's like in addition, I'd probably say something. If it was a remodeled kitchen, I'm sure I wouldn't. You'll know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's 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 real. It really comes down to um, the the fairness angle. If somebody is taking it, if somebody is taking advantage of everybody else by doing something that they should be taxed on, um, they, they will be. And now another <clears throat> from the other perspective, if we're going through all of this, you know, putting a lot of money into theoretically going into everybody's houses and um, is that an opportunity to pair that with something like if we were to make money available to give I was alarmed when I recently bought smoke detectors. They were more expensive than I remembered. And mm -hmm. like, is this an opportunity to try to look for safety issues or to make information available to people or to say, is there any thought about ever doing something proactive that would say, might say, oh, I noticed there weren't any smoke detectors? Well, that's just uh, yeah, you know, you know, you're getting to an area Harry, where... Who is actually going in and doing the home inspections. This is for KRT. Mm -hmm. okay. Caitlin and I will go with them, I, I hope often, uh, for two reasons. One is I want to get a feel for how they work. Everybody's a little bit different. And one of the important things is that once KRT starts, that the people that do the listing stay with it through the whole project so that we have consistency there. And so if I'm going to be speaking to a homeowner about why their value went up or why their grade is a five when it used to be a three or something like that. I want to understand what the lister was seeing and what they were doing and how they were mm -hmm. reacting. Mm -hmm. So while the lister will be doing all of it, mm -hmm. I anticipate accompany them often, not 50% of the time, but a good chunk, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Caitlin as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is Sophie, Stephanie. No, I think I, more, more of a comment, um, I think we need to do a lot of education of the public uh, uh, on those. Thanks for bringing I know, that I know up. We, I you kept and I on talked almost about, saying it. Right, you and I <laughs> talked about it often when we do reevaluations or when the meal rate goes up, because I think, you know, it's, it, these are complicated calculations and it's scary because you can, be in, you can have been in your home for 20, 30, 40 years and then suddenly the value puts you in the, the the new assessment puts you in a in a tough spot to pay your your taxes so i know the state has some um f you know we can have liens and things like that but i think more of any anything we need to have you know sessions when we can explain to the public how it works the mechanics show number have them ask questions and try to understand the resistance and the fears that you know somebody's going to come into my home look all around the place and come out and say your home is not worth four hundred thousand dollars but eight or whatever number it is mm -hmm. so so the more we can have information and and even tutorials you know how do you how, how is the calculation done what is the 
what is the relationship between the overall valuation of the town and the mill rate, which I can assure you a lot of my Camden uh, co-citizens don't understand. Um, it took me four or five times to really get it because it's, it's not something I'm, I'm familiar with you know, before I owned a home here. So the more we can do to educate the public, give them information, ask, have them ask questions, keep them also informed, when can they expect to be visited, you know, things like that, to stay ahead of the process and make sure that, that the people, the citizens in Canada are, have mm -hmm. all the information they need so that we can have a smooth process and hopefully a high level of participation because basically that's what you need. Right. You need, right. the, the more people will open the door to the, to the assessors, the better we will all be right. in the end, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Audrey, Caitlin and I have had that conversation. We plan on, we plan on doing some, some really intensive reach out Outreach. <laughs> gotcha. Doesn't vision uh, participate in that? Excuse me. Doesn't vision talk about that whole issue about public outreach as part of their proposal? Others mm -hmm. proposing yeah. about that. Uh, can, you, can you? Let's go to Stephanie first. She hasn't had a no, chance. That was going to be my question. Would be how are they going to do their outreach? How are you yeah. going to? send letters are you going to send little postcards we'll do we'll do some we'll do we'll do some of that we will do some it's of that yeah i know I, I agree with you stephanie we're yeah, not gonna we're not gonna go crazy with that yeah. what i'd like to do is like come here fairly often yeah, yeah. uh where the press can get a hold of it and anybody that wants to listen can to go to the rosary meetings uh you uh, sophie you and i talked about uh continuing education maybe i'll get something on the on the uh curriculum there mm -hmm. Um, because the, the more that people understand what I'm up to, uh, the better it is for me. And I, I'm all about self-preservation here. Um. Well, I mean, you're up against it because we have generational people here that they mm -hmm. are not letting anybody in their doors. So mm -hmm. you are, you have a yeah. mm -hmm. hard yeah. road ahead of you. So, so the, one of the things that I'll explain to those yeah. people, I'll tell you right now, is that there's in uh, Title 36, there's a Section 706A, which basically says that if I'm denied entry, um, then they can't appeal whatever value determination I make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's not without risk. And that we're never punitive about it, but I always round down in the taxpayer's favor. If I don't see it, I can't do that. So I'll see, I'll see a house, maybe I'll judge it by the outdoor, outside and say, all right, well, this looks like it must be pretty nice inside. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the judgment I make. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that people understand right. that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. So if we were in dire need of doing the, um, what is the one, the full, what are we calling this? Measuring the, list. Okay. Is um, the term. Why didn't we do that when we did, so in 2000, 17, we did this other thing that was the partial. Mm -hmm. I don't remember a pitch for something more comprehensive. Mm -hmm. There was none for two reasons. One is that we needed to save money. This is expensive. Right. And so we couldn't just do it. And, and, and we had to do something right away because our, our ratios sure. were just so out of whack right. that we had to do something to, to bring it up. One of, one, of the important, one, of, one of the things that doesn't happen when you don't do a measure and list is you miss the things that we don't know about. We miss the additions. We miss, the, the, you know, as, as honest as most people are, there's a lot that goes on people don't even realize they needed a permit for. Right, right, right. That's the most common thing. It's very think. common. It's very, very common. Right. And there are some things they don't need a permit for. You know, uh, you know if they remodel all the kitchen and they don't change the plumbing or the electrical right. and everything else, they don't, I don't think they need a permit for that. Um, no. so, I, so at any rate, there, you know, there's a lot goes on. So the measuring list then, I was going to say fine tunes your data, but corrects your data. Make sure that, that what you're judging that valuation on is correct. So usually I find that every, every time when I take the time to ask you as many questions as I want to, I always walk away agreeing with with your assessment of things. So my tendency is to say, oh, well, probably Carrie's right. But right now I'm still feeling like I'm not, can, like it's hard to see how anybody is gonna benefit from this. Is, is your thought 
that there's a lot out there that people maybe theoretically who can afford to pay a lot more or like really high value um, parts of a, of a property or a building are not being accounted for and so in that way it's you know it's enough of a number that it could be hurting everybody is that the thought here or is it just like it sound when we're saying all this it sounds like a like I know people are gonna be like this is just the town trying to be greedy but we're, it's, it, nothing that we do raises additional revenue for the town mm -hmm. it's just more equally well remember the, the, the value burden. goes up the mill rate should go down right right so so that's that's the dynamic. So we're not just taking a five hundred thousand dollar house, calling it a million, and walking away with a lot more money. Right. Because we're 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 lowering the mill rate. Right. By now, because point. some people are going to go up thirty five percent and other people ten percent, some people will pay more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And last time we did this, the people that ended up paying more were the people that had lower valued properties overall. Yeah, the, the beginning of this boom was the lower end. You're absolutely like, right. Like a lot of, so I, to me, it's hard to see that I would have kind of just preferred to delay the pain for everybody on that because it just doesn't feel it's, great. It's, but like, oh, we've written. It's, I, it's, I, it's, it's more equal. This is a lot of money. I just, I'm not, can, I, I don't, I'm having a hard time seeing the urgency when we've done a lot of other partial because, you know, because, the, because the longer we go without a measure and list, the less accurate those partials are. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, mm -hmm. and the less fair yep. is yep. the distribution of the, of the taxes. That's correct. If you, but if the measure of fairness is not ability to pay but market value. Well, of course. Well, that's a that's for everybody. Same for same everybody. For, same for every institutional city. principle in, the, in this state, certainly, but well, not everywhere. Well, um, no, it's different in California, but we're not going there, <laughs> um, at least yet. But it, the difference, the kind of basic difference people understand is it, this brings into an evaluation of a home, it brings the quality of that single home into the calculation, yes. into the consideration. What that has not occurred in the last two okay, partial evals we did. That has not occurred. So those of, of us uh, who may have done a lot of interior improvements and blah, 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 are going to wind up uh, with a higher valuation. And my, my next door neighbor who kind of fallen apart in the same neighborhood um, is not. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's, a, it's, it's. Is that a big component of this? That yeah, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Because people said to me during this recent, oh my God, my you know, small home and blah, 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 went from 250 to 375 and I didn't do anything to it. In fact, it's, it's fallen apart and you know, I've got problems and I can't afford to fix some of those problems. That person is probably gonna benefit from this. That's right. Because but, their property has been compared to all those houses that were on the market that maybe all of them had been renovated right before they were yes, sold. Yes, yes. And Allison, when we did the statistical update, they got caught up in whatever group they were in, as opposed to we walk in, we say, oh, this, this place needs some work. Right. I saw, I saw one situation in a related town where there was a multi-million dollar property on one lot, and next door was kind of a derelict property, but it was sold. Uh, it was sold for um, X hundred thousands of dollars, but because it was X hundred thousands and the properties next door were multi-million, their, their valuation went down. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. That's what occurs in what we did in the last two, because it's only based on market sales, period. No quality considerations, no differential kind of between homes that are right next door to each other in the same neighborhood. Yeah, we did, we did nothing to change and, the, and, the data and, of each property. And if anybody, um, we all need to understand that we're going to pay for what the value of our home is, which is the, I guess the land cost for sure, or the housing cost, and the quality of that home. And the location of it. And the location. And the, in the, relation to all the rest of them. Uh, no question, no question. And, so. and a fair and equal evaluation is important if we want to discuss a progressive tax rate, once we have a fair and equal evaluation, that's a different thing. But a right, fair so and equal evaluation is absolutely the starting point that you have to have if you want transparency in the system. Transparency. I agree with Thank, that. Thanks for that word. That's that exactly right. 
it's just that there's no hope of ever. I mean, you ha- it just it would be a state constitution change to change yep. the actual to make it progressive. And so, yes. to me, I kind of look at it like, well, what's the power that I have right now? And so we shouldn't I mean, be. We've we, just done a lot of yep. it. Since but we it's started, still the but. system we have to work with. And if we want to make a change on that level, then we should lobby for a change on that level. In, a, yeah. in, a, in Augusta. But, but I think, but but Tom is correct. We cannot ask for a change on that level if we don't have reliable, correct, up-to-date data. Absolutely. Well, there are, there are, there are, there are, there are I think but. Tom's referring to there are states where they don't use this system right, of evaluation. It's very common in New England. It's not as common in the West Coast. But in our case? We, we're, we have no choice. The, the Augusta has dictated this will be the statutes, and we have to, unless those are changed by election, and by the, which is not going to happen. Because uh, I think Massachusetts suffers from the same thing. I, I certainly Maine does. Um, it's, it's very New england well, uh, but Where are we funding but, this from? Is it going to go in the budget, or is it? What? Where's how are we paying for this? Okay, good question, Audrey. You want to address the budgetary considerations? So we did set aside a portion of this in last year's budget, and we'll set aside more. But also, the overlay can be used for right. this sort of purpose. Right, that works out well. Right. I'm not sure everybody knows what the overlay is. Maybe you want to explain that briefly. Sure. The overlay. There's an amount we're allowed to uh, to to tax five percent more. Um, then the math says that we should. And the idea behind the overlay... Up, up to. Up to. Up to oh, sorry. Up to, up to 5%. We, we have never gone anywhere near that high. No. Um, uh. the, pur- the purpose of it is to allow us to even things out. It's not supposed to be a budgetary matter. But when we plan an overlay, we, we, what the overlay's main purpose is, is a hedge against abatements and the cost of defending them. So we put enough money in there every year for, for that. And we make sure there's enough because if I have to issue an abatement and we don't have money budgeted, it's, it's hard to pay for it. Right. It's, it's, to, it's basically covering those who may not be paying their taxes. Right. And, and if you don't have that, and then the calculation with the mill rate, you don't have generated enough money to pay the bills of the town. So if I have an overlay of $150,000 and we yep. use fifty. dollars Yep. The hundred goes in the general fund, and right. you guys can decide that's going to be dedicated to tax relief. I mean, and we have. If that goes into the unassigned yes. fund balance, then that requires a town meeting vote to use it. Well, uh, um, when you think of the unassigned fund balance, we have is a certain percentage by policy, correct? 16.7 percent. We, uh, we usually wind up with a lot more than that. We've mm-hmm. used it every mm-hmm. year, maybe not enough, to reduce the tax impact. But that goes through the budget process and Correct. people vote on it. Correct. 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 So I guess I'm just saying, Correct. are we proposing to do this outside of the budget process by pulling from this fund and that fund and this fund? And mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. It's going to go to the budget. Mm-hmm. Through the budget process? Well, I so heard. We're not approving anything it tonight. It went through the budget process Already. partially last year. Mm-hmm. Partially. How much money did I think went we through the set aside fifty thousand mm-hmm. last year? Yeah, I think it was around that. Yeah, and so and then over the next two financial years, we'll be able to set aside in the budget. Each year. The rest of it. Yep. The rest of it. Together. This is a two-year project. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It will be billed ongoing. Of course. So we don't have to have all the money. So it's ten thousand dollars per month over two years, basically, just two hundred forty-nine thousand. Well, actually, the project completion is seven one twenty-four, I believe, right? Or, eight, or eight, eight one twenty four. Eight, eight, eight one twenty four, which is actually two. FY twenty five. Yes, it's three budget cycles three out. Budget cycles, yeah. So, but we would be voting to approve a contract and committing the town to paying this past out, outside of what this seems like the very definition of what we're not supposed to do. I mean, not, I'm not saying that there's anything. No, sure, I understand. But just procedurally. Good question. Good question. As I said, it seems like if we're trying to educate the public and we're trying to do all this and it makes sense, why not just have this conversation at the budget committee, let them decide to use the overlay or the unassigned fund balance recommended as part of the budget process and have people vote on it in June? Well, the budget will be voted on in June. So if we do recommend any money from anywhere for the next beyond the fifty thousand we've already approved, mm-hmm. that will go through the voters' approval. And we did discuss. I this. just don't see that we have the ability tonight to to this, sign a contract for two hundred twenty thousand dollars when we budgeted fifty. 
Well, I, as I see it, this is a time materials contract that has a two-year duration. We can cancel it any time. So we only can, we only are going to be authorized in this fiscal year to spend fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, right? I guess. And, I mean, or for other funds we may identify in the current budget. Yes, and, that, and then we can cancel it. If we don't, if it doesn't get refunded by the voters, then we will have to stop the project. But man, it just seems odd because it seems like such an easy, like a good thing to just talk about with the budget committee. And but I, maybe I'm not under. Well, I guess it's why didn't like, we budget you know, the, the full the, amount the that Ross it was gonna... and Avenue Bridge? We signed the contract to do that project Correct. before we budgeted Correct. every single Correct. dollar that we needed to match mm -hmm. MDOT's yeah, contribution it, to that. We signed an engineering contract, not a no, construction contract. No, we signed contract. a contract with MDOT to, Correct. to build the bridge. Correct. But yeah. MDOT, we're not paying MDOT. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah, I think we're complicating this and, and only... By normally we say, oh, we're going to approve this and we're going to pay it from here. But we're going to, in this sense, we're going to say we, we would approve this and we're going to pay 50000 from here and then we're going to... The rest, it's like a non-appropriations clause. Is there a non-appropriations clause in the contract that says if voters don't approve the additional funding, then we don't... We could do that because we don't have any sort of contract with them yet. So we could put that in there. Absolutely. That should be in there. I guess I would just kind of like to give voters the opportunities to vote on whether they want to do this, and as that would be a good public outreach. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Well, I mean, they did in FY 20, that, uh, 23. <laughs> Three. Yeah. Uh, right. They already voted on it once. And, and it wasn't like a hidden. It was. Of, uh, I'm not saying it was hidden or anything. No, it was its no, own it line. No, no, it wasn't. And, I'm, and this is an area where, you know, why we took 18 years, blah, 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 we don't want to go there, but you're not going to be able to, con the voters can't say we're not going to do this valuation and think that we're going to get away with that with the state. Bottom line. Yeah. So, this, you know, this, this is a very healthy thing to do. It is. I'm not really arguing that. It just seems out different than the process. I'm not aware of any other thing where we can just say we're oh. going to spend $220,000 on something when... This is how it works. I can't, like, the amount of MDOT contracts to do capital projects where we've gone through this exact same right. process where we've right. budgeted over several financial years and we haven't had voter approval all up front right. where we've signed agreements and committed and we, ourselves to... And we can insert an appropriations clause. I think, Allison, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. That'll cover all of that, just in case anybody's curious. If it's not appropriated, we, don't, we have to find another way to fund it or cancel it. Mm -hmm. And that, it, it's, at the end of the day, it's something that has to be done. And the, and I, the, That's the, like what we do with the ambulance. I mean, normally we say mm -hmm. we're signing a three-year contract, right. but really it, the, it could be right. stopped by the voters. That Correct. An know. appropriations clause can be put in, I'm sure. That's not, I don't think that's a big deal for whatever vendor you're approved. But it's something. It it's, it, it's, it's some, well, at some point, we're going to be forced to finish it. <laughs> this is not a decision that the voters have to say we don't want to follow state statute. I'm so, that's the, the core of this is a state statute that says you should do a revaluation like every 10 every years. Town in Maine, but I'm, I'm not against doing it. I'm I, in I, favor I, of doing I, it. It's a question, process no, question. Good questions, Alice, and I'm just we're trying to explain. I agree with Audra. We do have contracts, a number of them, where we've approved something, but it's always, it's always tied to appropriation. It's always, always, right. that's, we, we can't approve, a, 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 we can't approve a two-year contract. I have a question, uh, if I may. But more relating to the RFP process mm. and the criteria that were mm -hmm. used to select. Um, yeah, what's the name of the company? Uh, what are they called? Sorry, K K is it KRT? Yeah. Yeah. Um, We've used before, by the way. Yes, we have. We've used them before. I read your letter saying that you, you were really satisfied with their work and you, you, you think that, that it's a, a good choice for the town. <laughs> but I'm just curious, what were the criteria to select them and how many RFPs did you, how many bids did you receive? We had two. Two. We had two, and I anticipated two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, right on target. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and the reason for that, Sophie, is, is that um, we use Vision software. Vision is a pretty sophisticated camera right. system. Um, and there aren't a lot of people qualified to do a revaluation on it. So the two that I know are qualified both bid on the project. Um, the we felt as a group, I'll, I'll start with a little bit of the group and then I'll get into my personal feeling about this. We all independently thought that there was good, good detail, good explanation 
in the KRT proposal that was lacking in the Vision One. That the Vision One seemed a little bit like boilerplate. Um, right. They left out a couple of things that we asked for in particular mm. uh, that, that to me was pretty important. Um, one was about Caitlin and me going around with the listers on, on inspections. Mm. I mean, to me, that's non-negotiable. And, and, and I will say this, though, that's not all that common either. So, uh, so I appreciate KRT's willing, willingness uh, to play by a different set of rules. Uh, because I, I believe very strongly that if Caitlin and I don't know everything that went on, we can't be very useful to the people of Camden. I would have to commend that because I've never seen an assessor go on one of these situations ever. They really stand back and uh, be able to, um, what's the plausible deniability? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys from Massachusetts did it. <laughs> right. Exactly. So uh, how do you decide which ones to go on and which ones not to? I, uh, my schedule mo think. more than anything else. I mean, there will be some properties in particular that I want to see them mm -hmm. do. But for the most part, it'll be where I've got availability. Cool. Um, Other questions, board? So I have another question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, because this is new process to me. So I'm assuming that other towns around us are in the same situation. Is there an advantage to pulling resources together, and and or all those all those contracts have to be individually designed here, for here's each why, town? Here's why we can't pool them, because they charge by the parcel. Okay. So, so that's. That's, that takes care of that. And secondly, there's no savings in work for them because let's say we pooled with two other towns. Mm -hmm. Those are two separate databases, three separate databases that they were going to have to feed uh, as well as do the parcels. So, so nothing there. And I, go ahead. Okay. So that's super valuable to know. They charge by the parcel. And uh, in the course of those assessments, will the boundaries be checked? Is, so, so that's yes. also an, an opportunity for us to re, to update yeah, our GIS map mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. new GPS yes. data. Mm -hmm. Will they uh, share that with us? And we own everything they do. Okay. Oh, we own everything. They do. Okay. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and let me finish answering your question. Check? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The boundary. Can you expand on that a little bit? With the well, boundary. Well, like check? you mean neighborhood boundaries, right? Yeah. 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 Na so neighborhoods. So neighborhoods are are an economic neighborhood thing. boundaries. Yeah. Okay. Not, not, I was like, not, wow. Not, everybody gets a survey. Huh? Yeah, we'll, we'll take a we'll take. <laughs> We'll take a piece of hope and um, no, like public property. I'm sorry. Between public and private property boundaries, right? That, no, I doubt no? it. No, we wouldn't do that. No. You wouldn't do I, that. I mean, you know, one of the one of the one of the things that happens at a reval is we get into a lot of conversations with people, and so we might learn about a boundary problem. Mm. And at that point, I'll do some research and and, and mm. I'll help the person out to whatever extent I can. Uh, that, that's typical. I mean, we learn an awful lot. Um, during these exercises, sure. some of it, sure. some of it good and useful, some of it not. I'm sure, we'll find some interesting. Regardless, just finish answering your other question about about the, the yeah. two different ones. Yeah. When we hire KRT, we're getting Rob Tozier, Ken Rogers, and Kevin Lean, and we know that. We're getting the owners of the company, okay. and and all of their experience. We hire Vision. We're getting employees that may have been hired a month ago. Mm. Um, and, and we don't get to pick and choose, and we have no idea if we're going to get a star or, or something a little, little less right. lofty. Right. Okay. Well, to that dead end board, we need to uh, make a decision here, pro or con, about this uh, bid award. Do I have a motion to? When is it going to start? Sorry. Uh, February 1st, I believe. Oh, my gosh. Okay. How are you going to do this big public education? Oh, well, we're going to start. We're going to just start. Right. We have two start. years. We're not going to get. Yeah. Start with the people that already know what's going yeah, on. There's, 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 start with the people that already know what's oh, no, going the, on. Or? There's a lot of data collection that has it's, to go it's on. It's going to start with. Yeah, right, that's, the data. In the, that's in their proposal. Is very clear what they're going to be doing the yeah. first months. Okay. It's a lot of internal work. Mm -hmm. uh, but to get to Sorry, when are you going to start going around to people's houses? Oh, I, that is my I, question. I Probably March and April. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty much the same as. I mean, that's right. That part. That's what I thought. We we're going to. I, I foresee doing postcard awareness of that, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get out there and, and talk. Right. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna get out there and talk. Is what's gonna. Happen. Well, people are gonna, people are gonna, people are gonna come. He knows that is what's gonna happen. We're gonna talk. We are gonna like, come to you, which is why I will come here fairly often yep. and keep you yep. appraised of what's going yep. on. I appreciate it. It's like all I talked about in 2017 for so a while. So what is the Sorry. No, no, I was interrupting too. You go for it. In 2017, Allison, we hadn't done anything since 2004. 
That was a right. major, right. major right. shock to everybody. Right. You know, now we've been doing it almost every other year, which to, right. me, is, which to me is preferable because then yeah, we, stay right. at, we, st well, we stay at market. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's how we keep everything fair. Is by is by adjusting. If if right. if you know if we're let's just let's say there are towns that do this every year, not the whole measure and list part, but adjusting the updates that we've done every other year or every third year. Um, those three, there are towns that do that every year. Right. And what they're doing is they are making sure that it stays equalized, right. which is a smart play. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. So we, should we make a motion? To, so we're making a motion to approve the bid award to KRT. Correct. That's what was recommended was KRT. The, 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 the proposal that was submitted by KRT that Kerry recommends we adopt. Mm -hmm. um, and we're suggesting to have an appropriations clause in the sure. contract, sure. as suggested by Allison. Sure. And what? An appropriations, appropriations, clause. appropriations clause. Not appropriations clause. In, you know, and that we work with the budget committee to make sure that we plan the budgeting of well, the Well, that we have to do that anyway. We have to do that that's anyway. given. Okay, that so shouldn't be part of the motion. I mean, it's good to, I mean, it is good to talk everything, about it. Everything, like to go, everything that goes for the budget is discussed with the budget committee, including this. That, that's, he's aware that's of the given. fact he's going to have to do something yep. very similar right. to this right. to the budget committee. Correct. committee Correct. for two years in a row. Right. Two, two years, years in a row. row. <laughs> Sorry, three. Three years. This will be your Good. second year. Yeah. Have a second to uh, 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 so 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 fees so, so, motion. Second. Thank you, Tom. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion. Could you just ask that when they do the reporting, they do it like they did in 2017, where on the sheet it says old value, new value next to the so that basically you can go down and look and there's see there's going to be plenty of that did you did there, you happen to see the power bi that they put on their website the what power bi table no power was, bi that was isn't a incredible isn't it microsoft has a new fairly new to me anyway yeah. i think it's i think it's fairly new where it's a dynamic table where um we and 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 KRT has this capability. Power BI, it's called. Mm -hmm. it's Microsoft. Thing because I found it really difficult this year to to do to look at and compare the old value to the new I value. Got a, I got a letter that told me what that was. No, I'm looking at like from a neighborhood level oh, so that people oh, could oh, go oh, and oh. see what their yeah. Yeah. That, that, that'll, year that'll all be on the website. So, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Five zero. Thank you. We know this is very complicated, and then there's going to be a lot more public information and information. But this is complicated. Not to mention that not just the mill rate, as Sophie's point. This is very complicated stuff, and it's uh, I've never been in favor of the system that New England uses for valuation. But it is what we're required to do. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank, thank you all for your support. Thank you, Carrie. Thank I you very much. Thank you for answering all our questions, putting up with us. Yeah, and me especially. I'm sorry. We're the easy part. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Uh, I don't know. Steve, are you here for the fisherman's license discussion? Uh, let, let, let me go to that one next, so we don't have to keep Steve hanging around. Which is Thanks, everybody. Well, thank you, Carrie. Okay. We'll be talking more, of course. Uh, I'm going to uh, jump one here because uh, 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 Steve is here, and that's basically the approval of the 2023 commercial fishermen's float permit applications, of which I believe, Steve, there is seven. Uh, there are, if that's correct, it's Brad Street, Tibbetts, Appleton, Adam Scott, Brad Scott, uh, Winkelhofer, and Talbot. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So please. Yeah, I just wanted to come to see if you had any questions, I could uh, answer them. Justin, are these the same uh, applicants we had last year? Yes. Okay. No changes? No. Okay. And they were discussed by the Harbor Committee at the last Harbor Committee meeting and? last week and approved. There's no... Can I ask one question? Yes. Under Arthur Tibbetts, there's a note on there that says this application is approved for but denied for, and I can't read what... Probably because Art's got a series of boats, and a couple of his boats would be too big to fit so in there. The names, those are the names of the boats, probably. Yeah, so he's only got one small boat. It's a very small boat he brings in once in a while. Oh. Yeah, because I very rarely see seven operating down there. Yeah, he does a lot of work Equalizing, up and down yeah, the coast. But when he's in Camden, he likes to, to be able to I see. use the crane once in a while and stuff. Other questions? <laughs> Can I have a motion? I make a motion that we approve the... 
Fisherman Float, the seven, is that? Yes, Bradstreet, Chibbets, Appleton, Adam Scott, Brad Scott, Winkelhofer, and Talbot. For the 2023 season. <laughs> Someone hey, seconded, passed. sorry. Motion made and seconded for discussion. No. <laughs> yeah, someone's ready to jump in there with her hand. Thank you. I wanted you to say Thanks that with your eyes closed. Thank you very much. So can can we keep can we keep Steve one second? Can, oh. can, can, Steve, um, at the Harbor Committee, we were talking about the December twenty third storm, and oh. and Steve shared with me well not with me but with the Harbor Committee, the the story that for me illustrates this storm when you and Ben were in, in your office. Can you share that story, please? Because I think it's uh, so rele relevant and I keep sharing You're it. You're talking so. about the door story? Okay. <laughs> I haven't heard, I haven't heard it. So, so. Yeah, so the, this, uh, this sums up the storm when uh, my young, he's only 16, he's, he works for me and in, in oh. cleans the bathrooms on weekends. Oh. But yeah, he was down there because he lives right next door and, and I, at just, at, just before high tide and uh, one of the things that I remember was when he said to his dad, he goes, he said, uh, hurry up, shut the door because another wave's coming. <laughs> as, <laughs> as they're bailing, basically, Steve <laughs> It's a smart list. call, actually. It's up to your calves in the, in the office. Yeah. Again, thanks for taking the time, Steve. Thank we appreciate so it. Have a good night. Right. Steve, I, keep, I keep telling your story everywhere, so. <laughs> it did make me think a little bit about the refrigerator proposed yeah, for that area. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> Onward to the last item on our action list would be the um, uh, consideration of appointments for the planning board and the zoning board. Mm. That's um, why the, Sandy's really here. Wow, that's what uh, I was thinking, Sandy, was that's why I didn't recognize him for the rotary thing, because I had seen his application. I, I did. Um, Thank you for doing this. All right, for the zoning board, um, we have currently um, uh, uh, Debbie Coleman uh, on the board. Uh, John has stepped off, John Atman. French. And I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we're, we're recommending uh, Tia Anderson, Steve Beveridge, and Sandy Cox. Is that correct, Audra? So there's two different things going on. So there's planning board and then the ZBA. Right. So Did I get that screwed up? No, those are the ZBA people. ZBA is the I think, zoning board of appeals, right? right. But Deb's staying on. Who? Is yeah, Deb's staying on. And I think we were, I thought, on the zoning board. But Audra, I'll just turn it to you. What? What is the recommendation for the Zoning Board of Appeals beyond you, Deb? You're right. If you're doing ZBA first, you That's correct. Them. Okay. Yep. So they are Tia Anderson, Steve Beveridge, and Sandy Cox for recommendations for approval for the Zoning Board of Appeals only. Um, I make a motion that we approve the nomination of Tia Anderson, Sandy Cox, and Steve Beveridge, Steve Beveridge uh, at the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. A motion made in second discussion. No. All those in favor. Congratulations, Andy, you got another job. Thank you for your service, really. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. And thank you to all the people who apply that's, to our committees because it's an important value position. That. Thank, thank you, you, Sandy. 20, 30 years ago. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for staying, Sandy. Um, and to the planning board, I believe the recommendation is uh, uh, Lucia de, de Corbett. And John Cole, is that correct, Dodra? Yes. So there are two members of members, member positions for the planning board that are being recommended to the board for approval. As, were those as full members or alternates? Or? I thought they were members, but I, as I saw it, yes. but that could be wrong as usual. So I make Jeremy a, says he can step in, but maybe that's not needed if it's just that? regular members. Who's that? Um, Jeremy sent a message saying that I, he I could answer that, that, but it, I, is, is it regular two, members? Or, um, I can't, I know we did something kind of funny last time. Um, we tried to get Andrew to stay on and he still got away. Mm -hmm. But I think we had kept him on as a, so, uh, as alternate? a full member yep. and somebody else as an alternate. Sure. So does that mean that we need to bring somebody up to, the, who's currently an alternate? Do they need to be a full member? I didn't see that in the recommendation. Um, we can talk to Jeremy if you want, or I try to bring him on. Yeah. I know I they're in the middle of. That would be. Okay, let's, let's bring him on. I'll, I'll do it, else. Okay. There he is. I always even got his hand raised. I see that, but I'm trying to. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's not letting you. Yeah, it's not letting me upgrade him. Um, What's the heck? 
I can't. Where does it say? I can't uh, see Allison, the. Can you? I have it. Is it? That's not going to kick him out, is it? What does that one say on the right? I can't see it. My eyes. We really needed a bigger screen here. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. That's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you next time. <laughs> That should do it. Can you hear me? Yeah, Jerry, you can hear me. You can hear you. Uh, you heard our discussion already about the members. We're just trying to clarify who are members and who are alternates. It, it, the, we, I understood to be just Lucia and John as new members in the planning board. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. And remember, Andy Smith, um, you reappointed him last time, and he actually needs to get off. Okay. So you appointed him as, and that's this is kind of in my memo. So Andy Smith needs to come off. Um, that will leave us with, um, you would need to name at least one full member. Oh, see. And I would recommend Lu Lucia. Lucia as, as, as a, a member. Full member. And, and John, John as, as, as an alternate. No. Correct. And why, why is that, Jeremy? Particularly right now, John, I talked to John about this, and John is going to be on vacation for the mo most of February and all of March during a um, review that's happening right now. He's going to participate as much as he can, but he likely won't be there for the, um, for the discussion um, but the when it comes down to it. But the alternates then just operate as regular members when that person isn't available. I mean... John is Correct. a you never professional know when planner. Available that, and when they're not, that's the unfortunate thing. I guess my instinct would be based on looking at their background. John, I mean, John works as a professional planner. He's he asked really good he, questions of the other thing that I was just at. He seems just very the question prepared. is, Jeremy, why why what's the rationale for Lucia to be member? And John Alter, is there any? Is there any because that's schedule. Schedule, I see. Okay. Schedule. They both served as as um, municipal planners. Um, John served as municipal planner down in uh, Naples, Florida, and Breckenridge, Colorado, um, and Lucia did in Northern Virginia, both in the private and public okay. sector. So either way, I think oh. I mean the board's getting two great people um, with lots of experience. So either way, um, however you want to handle it. Right. Other board questions or a motion? I'm, I make a motion that we name, so we, we're naming John Cole as an alternate and Lucia de Cordray, uh, Cordray, sorry, Lucia, yeah, as a, a member. regular member to the planning board. Okay. Yeah. Motion made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion, board? All those in favor? 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you very much. All right, that's the last of our action items. Um, now we'll move over to Audra's management reports, if any. Yes, Please. so um, for the Martin Luther King Day ice slash snowstorm, um, because of the duration of that storm and how steady it was all day, mm -hmm. there's still cleanup continuing, and uh, that's particularly true for the sidewalks and um, mm -hmm. you know the public parking lots. So public works crews are going to continue to clear the sidewalks, but as of as of now, they're you know still pretty slippery. So mm -hmm. we're just asking everyone to take extra care when you're walking on the sidewalks, and okay. they're hoping that um, they'll be or they will be cleared in time for uh, Friday, which is going to be our next snowstorm. So we'll <laughs> okay. clear them and start all over again. <laughs> it's winter. Life of life of the plow crews. So um, the, on tomorrow, there's going to be a meeting of the parking advisory group to talk about the paid um, parking pilot program. There's just too many, too much, um, too many P's in that for the public landing. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they're gonna, everyone's going to meet tomorrow at 1 p.m. to review uh, a draft report that was prepared by John Burke that summarized the uh -huh. findings and looked at the, the data that was collected from the meters and you know the amount of money that was collected from the meters and times and um, duration and all of that. And also, they'll discuss additional recommendations and comments that have come through from community members. Uh, Scott Entwistle gave a lot of good feedback. Um, 
you know, we've had other yeah. residents who've given, you know, uh, input as to what would make that program, you know, better here? for everyone. Yeah, 1 p.m. 